Okay, let's talk mathematical definitions for big O. So, what's the big O definition actually useful for? So, if I actually want to show that one function is big O of another, uh, it's nice that we can do this in a more mathematical way that's a little bit less hand wavy. Uh, so, we showed some quick rules from 143 earlier in lecture, so hopefully these will be uh, somewhat familiar. Um, these will become really useful tools as we are doing like big O proofs and such. So first rule is exponential dominates a polynomial. So then I can say like 500 n to the 5 is in big O of 2 to the n. Uh, another rule is higher order polynomial dominates a lower order one. So I can say that n squared is going to be in big O of n to the cu n cubed. Any polynomial dominates a log. So that means that uh, 42 log n is going to be in big O of n, and log dominates a constant, so I'll say 750,000 is in big O of log n. Okay, great. So now we'll actually go over the formal definition of big O. So f of n is an o of g of n if there exist positive constants c and n naught such that for all n greater than or equal to n naught f of n is less than or equal to c times g of n. So this is a little bit of a mouthful, but we'll break down the definition and hopefully it'll make a little bit more sense. So if we want to show that f of n is an o of g of n, then our job is to pick these constants c and n naught that will make this expression true for all n greater than or equal to n naught. So you might be wondering, okay, what, what role do both of these actual constants serve? So first we'll see, why is n naught important? So let's say that we wanted to show that 10 log n is an O of n. Hopefully from the previous slide, uh, it's apparent that this expression is true. So if we actually plot these expressions, though, we'll see that uh, there's actually, it's not always true that 10 log n is going to be less than n. So we can, what we can see is that actually um, before like this point, this intersection over here, um, 10 log n is actually bigger than n. But since big O generally only cares about values of n that are really large, um, it's actually, it actually doesn't matter that uh, 10 log n is bigger than n for like small values. So what we can say is that after, uh, after this point over here, uh, n is always going to be greater than 10 log n. So if we picked a value for n naught to be maybe 37, because I'm guessing that's about where this intersection is, then that'll help us like show that this big O uh, definition is true. So basically everything off all points after about this like 37 point uh, will show that like uh, n is going to be greater than 10 log n. Uh, second question might be, okay, why is c important? So let's try, let's say that we're trying to show that 2 log n is an O of log n. So if we plot these two functions again, uh, we can see that this 2 log n term is always going to be greater than log n for any positive constants. So what we can do with our big O definition is that we can scale this g of n term. So we can scale this log n term by some positive constant. So let's say that I picked c equals 3. Then that means that like, let's say that this is uh, 3 times log n. So what we can see here is that this 3 times log n function is always going to be greater than 2 times log n. So uh, that will make our big O expression true for any values of, uh, for like, let's say, uh, yeah, any positive values of n. Okay, so in section, uh, we went over a big O proof. So... A problem that you might expect you to see is 3n plus 4 is big O of 5n squared. Um, 
So rather than trying to solve this all at once, it's usually a helpful strategy to try to break these down into su two subproblems. So we can try to find constants for C and N naught to make this expression true. So 3N is an O5 N squared. And we can also show that 4 is an O5 N squared. So we'll pick constants for C and N naught for both of these, and then we'll combine them at the end. Okay, so here's our first subproblem. Uh, 3n is an O of 5n squared. So remember that this is the uh, inequality that we're trying to prove. So our job is to first pick some values for c and n naught. Okay, so right now we'll try to pick a value for c. So we want to show that 3n is less than or equal to c times 5n squared. So something that we can say is definitely true is 3n is less than or equal to 3n squared. Um, and then we can be a little bit clever with our numbers and say 3n is less than or equal to 3 over 5 times 5n squared. So why did I pick this 3 over 5? So if I do 3 over 5, times 5n squared. I can like cancel out these 5s, so this term is basically just 3n squared, and we already made the statement above that uh, 3n is less than or equal to 3n squared. So basically this is an equivalent expression, it's just written a little bit differently to get the format that we want. So I'm going to choose c equals 3 over 5, and then this is pretty much exactly what we wanted to prove, uh, or what we wanted to show. So 3n is less than or equal to c times 5n squared. So I have this value for c now because I picked it in this step above. So we'll say uh, c is 3 over 5. OK, so now we're going to just pick our value for n naught. So we're going to do 3n is less than or equal to 3n squared. So the reason that this is a 3n squared instead of a 5n squared is because, remember, we came from this um, like 3n is less than or equal to 3 over 5 times 5n squared. So we're using this value of c that we chose in the step above. So that's why this is a 3n squared. So turns out that this problem is actually like pretty simple now. So this is obviously true when n is greater than or equal to 1. So we can just pick n not equals 1. So we're done now. So, okay, so now we've finished doing our first half of the problem. So we picked a value for C and N naught that uh, make this expression true, that shows that 3N is in big O 5N squared. Okay, cool. So now our next step is to show that 4 is in big O 5N squared. All right. So we're going to follow a very similar process for this. So we'll start from this inequality. 4 is less than or equal to 4n squared. Uh, and now we're going to choose a value for c. So we're doing the same trick again. So 4 over 5 uh, times uh, 5n squared. So this expression is equivalent to the one above because we're basically just canceling out these 5s. So this is just another way that we can write 4 is less than or equal to 4n squared. Cool, so we know that we can choose this value for c equals 4 over 5. And this is also what we wanted, so we can say 4 is less than or equal to uh, c times 5n squared. So we've chosen this value for c. And then we'll do this, we'll do a similar thing as we did above. So with this value of c, uh, we're basically showing that. Uh, 4 is less than or equal to uh, 4 over 5 times 5n squared. So this is where this like 4n squared came from. It just comes from us plugging in this value of c. So this ends up also being pretty similar. Uh, so this expression is clearly true when n is greater than or equal to 1. So that makes uh, choosing n not really simple. So we'll just choose 1. And now we're we're done with both of our subproblems. So we know that 
according to our big O definition, uh, 3n is in big O 5n squared. Uh, and we know this is true because we can pick these constants c equals 3 over 5 and n not equals 1. And this will like make the definition true. And same thing for 4. So now that we've solved both of our subproblems, our next goal is going to be to combine them. All right. So once again, here, here's our results for both of our subproblems. So we can just like write it out fully uh, with like the constants and stuff. We can write these two expressions. Um, and now we can try to combine them. So 3n plus 4 is going to be less than or equal to 3 over 5 times 5n squared plus 4 over 5 times 5n squared. And so right now we're just basically chaining these two inequalities together. Uh, and th these are both true when n is greater than or equal to 1. So now we can just factor uh, out our common, uh, like our common uh, n squared terms. So right here we have this 3 over 5 times 5 n squared and 4 over 5 times 5 n squared. So when we combine the terms, we just get 3 over 5 plus 4 over 5 times 5 n squared. And now we can just like add these two together to find like a overall C and overall and not for this expression. So now we've chosen C equals seven over five and not N, N not equals one. So these will work for showing that this expression is in big O of five N squared. Okay, so just to recap, uh, so just to recap, this would be like a full proof that's written out. So here's our claim. 3n plus 4 is an O 5n squared. Uh, and then we're going to show that there exists positive constants c and n naught such that for all n greater than or equal to n naught, 3n plus 4 is less than or equal to 5 c times 5n squared. So this is just the definition of big O. So let c equals 7 over 5 and n naught equals 1. So these are the two constants that we had found earlier. So 3n plus 4 is less than or equal to 3n squared plus 4n squared. This is less than or equal to 7n squared. And this is less than or equal to 7 over 5 times 5n squared. So we're substituting this, uh, exp we're substituting these like expressions. Uh, and then this is less than or equal to c times 5n squared. So the claim is true. Yeah, so basically we just like plugged in our value for C and then turned this kind of into this like big O uh, expression that we originally had.